see is their life after camp meeting. I just shake somebody on the other side of you and say, I believe there's some life down in there. Oh, hallelujah. Has God done anything good for anybody this past week? I think we need to raise up our voices and let God know we appreciate him moving in our midst in such an incredible way during this past week. Come on, somebody, let's sing that again. meeting somebody said well what kind of time was it let me tell you something captives didn't only get set free in here at the altar they got set free out there waiting to eat a weenie amen they didn't just get set free in the altar here they got set free in the nurseries and in the children's ministries amen you're part of something bigger than you realize it's called the body of Christ God is at work. I, somebody said, you always say that. Well, it's true. God's at work in the midst of his people. Look at somebody next to you and say, God's working in my situation. It's the year of Jubilee. It's my time for my thing, from my God. Hallelujah. I hope you haven't lost sight of that. Now I realize, you know, there was a, about 15 bazillion volunteer hours turned in here at camp meeting, but thank God we're not looking backward. I believe the greatest days of God revealing His glory in our midst are right ahead of us. Hallelujah. And I'm sure glad you're here tonight. I wouldn't want you to miss what it is that God's about to do in your situation. And a lot of people are looking at me like, I don't even know what my situation is. That's all right. God knows what your situation is, and he's about to transform it, if you'll allow him to. How many of you believe God's got something left he wants to do in your life? Hey! Let me just let you in on a little secret. Amen. Don't miss Sunday morning. I mean, don't miss Sunday morning. You, you just are not ready for what it is that God's going to do in this place Sunday morning. Somebody said, you don't know yourself what God's going to do. Well, I know a little bit. And I'm just telling you, all right? 
So if anybody asks you what happened in church tonight, don't tell them. Just say you should have been there your own self. And then you would know. But don't miss Sunday morning. Be sure to tell them that, all right? Praise God. Praise God. I want to add <clears throat> my thanks to everyone who served and volunteered so faithfully during camp meeting. I believe that we had the greatest and the most intense camp meeting that we have ever had. And I think we ought to thank God for that. Amen. I think we ought to just take a minute and thank God for showing out in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We averaged, I don't know how many people in the buildings, every single service, uh, over 100,000 prayer claws. Just incredible. And you have to understand the impact of what happened here doesn't end when the curtain goes down at the end of the last meeting. That thing was broadcast on TBN and we've got thousands of tapes and books. We've already heard good reports coming back to us about how God moved in such a supernatural way in people's lives during camp meeting. And we thank God for that. And your faithful support and your involvement made that possible. And uh, thank God for it. Thank God for the impact that we had on thousands of churches and hundreds of thousands of people as the influence of what it is that God did here continues to spread. How many people do you think already heard about that little nine-year-old bo uh, boy who was here on Monday night whose sight got restored? I guarantee you people are talking about that. Amen. So we thank God for that. But how many of you know the work of God goes on after the special meeting is over? And every time God's people get together, it's special. And God wants to do something in your life and in your situation, and he wants to do it tonight. Now, I realize that most of you were probably busy during the camp meeting services, and so you didn't have an opportunity to be in here, and you may not have had an opportunity to give in any of the offerings that were taken during camp meeting. That's all right. You've got an opportunity right now. Oh, I'm overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. Praise God. You have an opportunity to get involved right now. And the work of the ministry goes on. And thank God after vacation's over, we still got to pay, after camp meeting's over, we still got to pay the light bill and take care of the salaries for over 300 and some, 80 some staff now, I think it is. And we're going to make sure that those obligations are fulfilled and that those things are taken care of but we're going to do it as a result of your obedient giving now I want to share something with you we don't need to tip God our response to him financially ought to be some measure of appreciation for what it is that he's done in our lives I heard things and experienced things during camp meeting that will cause my life never to be the same I ought to thank God for that and I'll let him know in some tangible way that I appreciate what it is that he's done. And that's what I'm challenging you to do tonight. I want to challenge you. Let God know that you appreciate the way that he moved in your life or in a family member's life or in someone that you know during this series of meetings that we've just come through and let him know that you anticipate great things in the days ahead. And let him know that as a result of your obedience in giving tonight. If you're making out a check, make it payable to World Harvest Church. If you're giving a cash gift and you'd like an offering envelope, you'll find those in the pews in front of you. And whatever it is that you give, do it in obedience to the Spirit of God. God's given us life and everything that pertains to life and godliness. We ought to let Him know that we appreciate it. We ought to thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Parsley's with us. Would you please welcome him as he... Praise the Lord, everybody. the Lord. 
You can be seated. You ushers can sit down too. You're not ready for you yet. Well, I'm pretty well messed up. God has been dealing so very, very severely in my life for about the past, well, I guess it's four or five days. For about the past four or five days, just dealing very, 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 very strongly with my life, dealing with me. And uh, every, time I, every time I go into that thing, cut this back just a little bit. Every time I go into that thing, into one of these situations, I get into it two or three days, and, and finally my wife just says, what is wrong with you? And I, because it, it passes me that I've been in, that I have been enveloped in the presence of God. It passes me that, you know, the rest of the world is going on, but I'm, I'm in this zone. I, I don't see stuff. I don't hear stuff. I don't pay attention to stuff. It, you look at me and my, I look funny. I feel funny. It's strange. I said, it's strange. The determined dealings of God in our life are strange. Well, I don't know about you, you know, because I don't know if you ever operate in the prophetic, even in your own life, much less anything else, you know. Most of you can barely find your way to the building. We didn't give you a map, I doubt you'd make it. But for those who are sensitive in the spirit, and the, and the reason for that is because you're so much more acquainted with your flesh than your spirit. You're just staring at me funny. Maybe I shouldn't be wasting this. Uh, you can't hear. Bouncing around. You won't hear every word. So come down here. I started a minute ago, and I'm standing over here. You get the videotape. You look. I was looking over here a minute ago. I started to say, "Why don't y'all come down here?" And so come down here. Just come on. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you some stuff tonight. You're gonna be glad you came in the house tonight. You're gonna be glad you fought whatever devil you fought to get here. You're going to be glad you used up the gas you was going to use to get to work tomorrow to get here. You're going to be glad you pushed through stuff and shoved stuff aside. And for every devil that told you, well, why don't you just rest tonight? You're going to be rewarded for making the effort tonight. Just get out here anywhere. It doesn't matter. Just get out here. Just make sure you, you're at a place you can hear kind of, those sides are kind of hard to hear on every now and then too. So if you can't hear good over there, move over here. I've been calling people on the phone. I, I've been, 30 minutes, I've been back here calling people on the phone. It's amazing when you get a call from the pastor on the phone saying, why aren't you in church? I, I had a word for you, but I see you're at home. So I guess you'll be missing it unless you get in your car pretty quick. I've been calling people for 30 minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I just stand up and rejoice a while. You rejoice. Hang on there. You rejoice. Somebody come close these doors. Somebody come close these doors. You rejoice. You don't have to have a choir to help you. You rejoice. You open up the realm of the Spirit to hear a word from the Lord. There is a word. There is a word. I dare you to begin to say it. There is a word. There is a word. There is a word. 
There is a word. There is a word. I want it. Now through praying in the Holy Ghost, begin to give birth to that thing. Birth it out of your spirit. Birth it out of your room. I want to be changed in here. Oh, God, it's Wednesday night. It's my time. It's my time. Just one word from you will do. That's all I need. Just a word. 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 Not a sermon, a word. Yeah, not a text, a word. Something delivered up by the Holy Ghost. Something brought out of the natural realm and manifested in the realm of the Spirit. Something that'll tell you which way to go tomorrow. Something that'll show you how to stand today. Oh, Come on, birth it out. Birth it out. Some of you are going to have to pray 15 minutes in the Holy Ghost before you can even get beyond your flesh. Come on, get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. Get out there in the realm of the Spirit. Get out there in the realm of the Spirit. You're a spirit being. Shake yourself in the Lord. Shake the cobwebs out of your spiritual mind. Shake yourself in the Lord. Open up your spirit wide. Open up this. Ah! Open up your spirit wide. Wide, 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 wide. Cast off every imagination. Cast off every imagination. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Stop looking at the person next to you. Stop talking to somebody beside you. Stop fidgeting in your pew. Zero in, lock in. Let the navigational equipment of the Holy Ghost praying in other tongues through you. Bring your compass dead to center to receive a word from the Lord that will change you, rearrange you. Pray! Pray! Birth it out. Some of you are standing there. This is not meditation. This is not Eastern mystic meditation. God, when you meditate, God, when you meditate, said for you to declare. You begin to speak. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You speak mysteries. You speak it out in the Holy Ghost. And the man of God gets the interpretation. You pray it out. Shake yourself. You're not tired. You're too tired to pray. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. Le colobo clongro do gerste blo grande che fa bomba mamma si di 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 un dolo mande di di a bossa da che feria basce che no che me fa da na. Se lambo clongro casic blato grando brete che va fambo. Ve mandambo che le amote blango casambrata. Rotar di chi bece, bece o conce e frutta, rotta la moche per fe chi vi ho fatto, sciate e gioca la moche si che amma. Morde da bada 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 Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And they shall be filled. Some of you are not hungry and thirsty because you've been drinking old wine and eating the husk that the swine won't even eat. Stir yourself up. You're full of TV and magazines and Empty yourself out. Empty yourself out. Empty yourself out. Pour it 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 out. Sera borata. Let the damn da. Some of you, your feet talking louder to you than your spirit. I'm tired of standing. Some of you can't zero in.
I give the Lord a mighty shout. You may be seated. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Now, now all I'm going to do is just tell you two or three, three or four things that the Spirit of the Lord has been dealing with me about and uh, intensified that dealing on this afternoon. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning will be one of the most important services for you to be in ever. So just mark that down somewhere. I need to be here Sunday. Yeah, but I'm going on vacation. Go Monday. But, but yeah, but I, but, 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 no. You want God or that? So, hallelujah. Now you, you will have to forgive me because just like, just like Joni, you know, she been, she been with me now nearly 20 years and uh, she, she just you know she just now beginning to recognize when this thing comes on me and a lot of times it's been on me two or three days three or four days sometimes five six days before I even realize that it's there it just it just comes on me and 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 I'm talking about stepping into a uh, out of one vein into another vein and we'll we'll call this one this strange one we'll call this the prophetic vein is that all right if we call it that because it has those markings or it has those characteristics I did not say that I was a prophet however I do function in the office of prophet in this place in you're not here in this place there's there's there, there's a difference I didn't I didn't I didn't go around I don't have to you know go on TV and proclaim I'm a prophet you know I that's that's not that's not the situation but the situation is that in the gifting that God has on my life where he raised me up to raise this place up there has to be an anointing with that Amen. the apostolic anointing now once again did pastor say he was an apostle I didn't say I was an apostle see you have to listen to what said with something other than just your natural ears I said it is an apostolic anointing and, and I know that it's for this place. Now, I might try to get out of here and do something else. That, that anointing would lift off of me. If I was an apostle, that anointing would not lift off of me. It would stay on me. But I've never tried that and don't have any intention on trying it. So it's not all that important to me what kind of label you hang on me anyway. But I do know this, that it takes an apostolic anointing to take your fingers and your hands and root out of nothing. A place where God has chosen to place his name that takes an apostolic anointing now if there is an apostolic anointing then the apostolic anointing or the gift of the Apostle is the only one of all fivefold ministry office gifts the Apostle prophet evangelist pastor and teacher that touches all other gifts the prophet points his finger the evangelist the large one on the hand the showy one the pastor, the one that's forever married to the church, the teacher, the one small enough to get into your ear. But on the base of that thing is the apostle. He's the thumb, the apostolic anointing. In order to operate in the apostolic anointing, you have to be able to come in and out as the Spirit wills of all other five-fold ministry office gifts. And that's one thing that makes World Harvest Church kind of unique. You walk out here, you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen. It may be an evangelistic anointing. We may do, I'm telling you, we can get more people saved during the offering than most churches can get saved in a revival campaign that lasts because why that anointing just falls it just it just comes on there also with the uh, evangelistic anointing also with that anointing are signs wonders miracles healings deliverance from demon power so on and so forth so that's the evangelist which sometimes you get that but sometimes you come out here and it's the pastor I'm just I'm just down in here where you live I'm trying to help you make it from Sunday
Monday night to Wednesday night. I'm trying to get you through Monday and Tuesday. That, that's part of the anointing that's on my life. Then you come out here another time, it's the teaching gift. And I just teach you and impart to you and teach you and impart to you, line on line, precept on precept. That's the teaching anointing. I don't know when it's going. I can't, I don't sit back there and say, now Lord, I would like today to operate in the teaching gift, please. I don't, I don't have any control over that. Except to disobey. I do have that ability. I do have the ability to disobey. I do have the ability to come out here and say, Lord, I don't want to operate in the prophetic gift. I don't want to tell them you said that because they're not going to like what you said. And they, since they can't get to you, they're going to take it out on me. Are you in this building? Yeah. Or sometimes I, I don't want to get out that pastoral thing. I don't want to come and hang out with you because you stink. And you rub all over me. And then I just end up stinking like you. You understand? Sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I don't want to talk to you about how disrespectful it is to the Holy Ghost for you to get up and walk out of a service and a man of God up here trying to get people into the kingdom of God. I don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. You know, I just, I, sometimes I'd rather just be the evangelist. Just blow in, blow up, blow out. I don't have to live with you. Are you in the building? Sometimes I don't want to teach because I like to preach. And there's a difference. And so I don't have any control over that, you see. And sometimes I don't think you know where you are. Now see, what's on me now is that prophetic thing. That when, I'm, when he's in this mode, that's not the time for you to mess up at work. Because it take your head off. The man will take your head off. I know that. I know that. When the prophetic unction is on me, decisions are made with split hair accuracy and in ultra supersonic speed time. You don't, you don't mess around. You want to mess around, get when he's under that pastoral thing. And mercy is the motive. Amen. But they're different offices. They're different callings. And all of them together make one complete body. Are you here? Now, you don't, you don't have to have that to, you know, go pastor some church where some denomination raised it up 50 years ago and they got, you know, 500 people and they go in there and they listen to a preacher and so forth. All you got to do then is be able to get up there and preach a little bit. But in order to do this, this is a whole different thing. And then, and then God raises up those things for you to look into. Now you're not only just talking to these people and trying to pastor them and, and, and trying to have, have healing meetings for them and salvation for them. Now you're doing it for the nation and beyond the nation. Now you got a world on your shoulders. Who, who wants this job? Hello. I was looking, I was looking at the presidency the other day. My God, who'd want that mess? Who'd want to do that? My wife looked across the room at me and said, people foolish as you are, I guess. Who'd want that mess you got us into? <laughs> Amen. And that prophetic thing comes and it, 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 it just gets on you. More than any of the rest, it, it comes on you. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It comes on you like a garment. And, it, and let me tell you something, it's thick and, and, and it's heavy. And that, no question in, when it's there. It's there. It just, it just comes. Now, this is a strange time for it to come. I, I, what I'm trying to communicate to you is I don't think you fully realize, and maybe you don't even need to, but I don't think you fully realize the, the, the ministry that God has set you down in. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think you even begin to fathom the outer skirts of this thing, of what God's got you involved in. But God's using you nonetheless. How many of you know he don't, you don't need to understand it all for him to use you? Just come in and keep shouting and keep praying and keep rejoicing and stay in a pew and, when, and, just, and just be there. Just be, just be. Whatever God has you be, just be that. Just be that. And someday the veil will be lifted and you will see what you actually had a part in. And I'm telling you sitting, I'm telling you right now that you are right now sitting in the middle of history. I'm telling you that years from now, should Jesus tarry his coming, they will read about what goes on in this place. You, 
I couldn't, let me tell you something, last Sunday, I couldn't have said that. But I was in a different, I was in a different function then. Now, you, you in this function now. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't go picking the wrong song to sing now. No, see, your head will go rolling across the this is not a time to play, not a time to miss Wednesday night, not a time to get lazy. Hallelujah. 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 Now this prophetic anointing, this prophetic anointing, it's not, it's not just tonight. You see, when it comes on me, God begins to walk me back through. Remember when I said this through you? Remember when I said that through you? Remember when I told you this was going to happen? Remember when I had you lead them down this road? Remember when I told you to get across the river here? Remember when I told you to turn left there? And God begins to show me prophetically how he brought us all the way along from where we were to where we are. And every time he shows me that, it's because there is a consummation. God is saying, okay, you're getting ready to leave that because I'm getting ready to have you enter into this. And can I tell you right now if you think where we've been has been something else you ought to see this land I've spied out in the spirit you ought to see where we're going you ought to you ought to find out you've been dancing on the step and thinking it's heaven I'm telling you we're going on up a little higher sit down hallelujah Hallelujah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But listen to this. The 10th verse of Amos. See, you get in this prophetic thing, then, then prophets start speaking to you. I could show you right now, I could show you right now five different nationally known, nationally recognized ministries that are right now beginning to toot what we've been saying in this house for over two years. Something happened in the, in the now we've always, we've always had a prophetic ministry. This has always been a prophetic church. But something happened when my pastor went to heaven. I said something happened when my pastor went to heaven. There was a new mantling. And all of a sudden, here comes pastor's conference. People have begged me for years, have a pastor's conference. You got a big old church, you got a TV ministry, you got a, you got a staff, over 350 people, you got a, a, an academy, you got a national, international television, radio ministry, you got a Bible college. My God, you've got everything there. You got inner city ministry, you've got everything there that any pastor would ever want to know about. You need to come and let these pastors come and you need to sit them down and you need to have a pastor's conference. And just as quickly as I know what my name is, I'd say no. You never told me to do that. You missed what I said. Now, I, I can tell you right now, if you're nervous, just, this would be a good time to go. Because I may be here at midnight. I may, I may be here at midnight. I'm not, I'm not going to have a pastor's conference because it looks good. I'm not going to have a pastor's conference because we could make a million dollars having it. Although God knows we need the million. I'm not going to have a pastor's conference because God did not tell me to have a pastor's conference. Then, Pastor Ronnie Trice was sitting back here in the, in the conference room. He said just as nonchalantly and as casually as it, a thousand other preachers had said to me at other times. Just as casually as he could say it. I think you ought to have a pastor's conference. I never missed a bite of peas. Between the peas and the mashed potatoes. Up out of my spirit came. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it in September. I said, what? 
Did somebody hear somebody say something? <laughs> up out of my spirit it came. Not out of my mind. Up out of my spirit. God said, now's the time. Are you in this building with me? And at that first pastor's conference, I shall never forget what God spoke to me prophetically I was to preach for three nights. Some of you don't remember, but I remember. Number one, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. God spoke to me. This is a mess. God said to me, I want you to look in a camera and I want you to command America to repent. This is your message, preacher boy. You're not going to get to tell them, you're a woman, so I feel sorry for you, so all the women come to my meeting. Or you're a man, so I feel sorry for you, so all the men come together and we'll lick each other's wounds. Or I, I didn't get to be the healing man. Nothing wrong with that, thank God. But I didn't get to be Benny. Do you understand? I didn't get... Well, it's not hard to get a crowd when you don't preach the word. And you say it's a night meeting and just come on in and God's going to heal everybody. I mean, thank God for that. I, what I would give to get to be the one to do that. I'd get me a white suit. I mean, I love Benny like a brother. But I mean, God let, that's what God let him do. Just tell them, son, I don't care if they're Baptist, Episcopalian, atheist, voodoo, Catholic, Baptist, or charismatic. Just tell them, come on, and don't preach the word. Don't even preach the word. I'm not interested in you preaching the word. Interested in you praying for me to heal them, and I heal them. Well, that's, it gives a demonstration. And thank God for it. I mean, how I'd love to do that. Wouldn't that be fun? Woo! I mean, even my son also said, Daddy, why don't you do like Benny? I said, what do you mean? Knock him down, pick him up. Knock him down, pick him up. I mean, my son plays Benny. He don't play me. He, he does. Makes his sister come in. Touch. That's what he did. Touch. She falls down and he yells, pick him up. She gets up and touch, pick him up. He don't play me, you know. God told me, you go to Washington, D.C. I didn't go to Washington, D.C. because I thought it was a good idea. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, boy. It's been three days of preaching. I mean, it's been six days of preaching three times a day. Seven, including the next Sunday. Because while oh, you resting on Saturday after camp meeting, I'm getting ready for two services Sunday. Walk in here and do Sunday morning, Sunday night. Now, here was the plan. They said, Pastor, you can't go to Washington and call America to repentance. You can't do that. There's no time to do that. I had one day on my calendar. One day. Do you know what day it was? The day after Dominion Camp Meeting. On Monday morning at 7 o'clock, I'm getting on an airplane to go stand in the 110 degree Washington, D.C. sunshine. Putting a big old reflecting thing in my face, sunburning my lily white skin, <laughs> standing there, and I don't even get to do something fun. I get to look in a camera and say, America, here is the word of the Lord to you. Repent. spoke to me some of you folk need to realize this is not little Rodney from Pickerington 
I don't ask you to respect me or even like me personally. But it's time a whole lot of folk, including this staff that's all sitting at home tonight, recognized the gifting and the calling and the office that God has raised up in this house. I'm just telling you, some other night, I can be nice. I can't be nice tonight. I can't be nice tonight. Well, we're tired. We worked hard during camp meeting. Well, I didn't see anybody taking a nap. I want the name of every staff person that's not in this service tonight. You elders, get it for me. Then I want them ask the question, what was more important to them tonight than what I had to say to them? And maybe they ought to be working somewhere else. I'm not going to give my life for a game and a toy. I want to know where half the choir was tonight, incidentally. And musicians. I mean, if we're not going to have church around here, if it's not good for all of us, let's just lock the doors on Wednesday night. I am not going to put on some dog and pony show to get people to come to church. Now, I love you. I love you. Don't you all sit there so sanctimonious like you ain't never missed. <laughs> Half of you tried to stay home tonight. Wife wouldn't let you. <laughs> Come on. I, I love you. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I just want you to understand. I, di I just want you to understand. I doubt that Jesus is going to make a pit stop by staff people's house that are sitting at home changing channels tonight when he comes in the rapture. Hello? Well, glory to God. Anyway, here's what God said to me. Now, do, are you getting this picture? Because it's going to turn real good here in a minute. The prophetic gift, it just shh, cuts you going in and heal you coming out. It just, just what it does. Glory to God. Shout Glory! Think I wanted to do that? Think I wanted to get up six o'clock on Monday morning after camp meeting two years ago? I mean, it made such an impression. I can still remember it now. Pulling in there, Danny with him, wondering what in the world's going on. All the streets are blocked. We forgot it's the 4th of July. <laughs> We've come to do a breakthrough special on the 4th of July in Washington, D.C. I forgot about it being the 4th of July. God told me, arise, go to Washington, D.C., and call this nation to repentance. I told him in the, in the, in the suit meeting, suit, S-U-I-T, not soup, suit. I mean, with all the folks supposed to know everything. I told him, I told him, this is what God said to do. Oh, oh, oh. I got up and left the room. I got up and left the room. I came back in the room. I said, while I was gone from the room, it got worse. I said, you remember that prayer cloth thing Jesus told us to do at camp meeting? Jesus just told me, I'm to lead the nation in sackcloth and ashes. Repentance. Oh yeah, you say, come on now, honey. Once again, you're not the healing man. You're not Mr. Feel Good. I'm walking out and calling the nation to repent. I'm not talking about the prophet that comes through. Oh, and, and you're going to be blessed, and, and you're going to be blessed. Yay, shikamo hai, shish kebab. You... 
Then everybody, oh yeah, he's a prophet indeed. I didn't see none of them call on the nation to repentance. I stood up in that meeting. I said, I may be the only man in America brave enough and bold enough to spend $500,000 in airtime alone to tell America, God said, repent in sackcloth and ashes. We're not sending a prayer cloth. We're sending a sackcloth saying we're going to repent of racism. We're going to repent of idolatry. We're going to repent of the, of the vicious uh, uh, spirit of anger and violence in this nation. Now that's what God told me to do. And it wasn't enough. He told me to do it. I had little enough sense to obey him. To obey him. Go tell American homosexuals to repent. Tell the church to repent. To rend their hearts and not their garments. To put on sackcloth and ashes. In a sign of national repentance. Then I came in here to this pastor's conference and God gave me that message from Acts chapter 3, what, verse 19. Repent! And I will send times, night number two, of refreshing. God to begin to refresh us and refresh those pastors. God had me preach for nine months on the power of Pentecost. That the wind was blowing. That the wind was blowing again. Get in, get in, get in, get in. That God in Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost, was becoming the Christ in you. And I said, if you'll repent, he'll send times of refreshing. And then on that last night, he'll restore everything. God gave me that Egypt parallel. If we believe we're living in the last day, then we must believe that just before we leave this planet, it will be as it was in Egypt. That before they left Egypt, you better listen to me, that before they left Egypt, God would lay to them, watch now, this wasn't in the year of Jubilee, this was two years ago, two years ago. God does not work Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, God weaves in a prophetic ministry, God weaves that thing through years of time. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting this. It's not only important not to miss individual services, it's real important to hang on Prophetic ministry is like the weather in Ohio. If you don't like it right now, hold on, it'll change. We'll eventually get around to something you like. My God, man, bolt your feet down to the floor. I don't know if anybody can get this time. Well, I'm gonna stand here and prophesy anyway. Stamp this altar prophesied anyway. Now what did I say two years ago? Repent. I'll send times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And I'll restore restoration. That before we leave here, good God Almighty, there was not one sick one among them when they walked out of Egypt. 
There was not one Paul one. Poe, I said. There was not one Paul one among them. Not one. God laid in them till they couldn't even carry it all. God began to lay them them with the wealth of Egypt. And before we get out of here, we're not just going to be rich. We're going to be very rich. I didn't say I was going to be rich. I'm already rich. I said you're going to be rich. Man walked up to me last week. Here's $50,000 for your son. Yeah. Had your boy on the heart. Here's 50000 Don't just shout at mine. You ought to get your own. My mother, operating in the prophetic some time ago, about nine months ago, walked up to a man in the service. God said, give that man $100. She had $100 in her pocket. That's all she had. $100. She got pop-eyed mad. When she found out later that that man was one of the wealthiest men in that state, a multi-millionaire, and God told her to give him a hundred dollars, he introduced himself, said, I'm an investor. He said, I appreciate this gift. I don't really need it. Would you mind? if I invested it for you. He said, I'll receive it as a seed and I'll see what God will help me do with it. You, t you tell me God won't tell you where to put your seed? You oh, good God Almighty, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run! She was arguing with God. Why didn't you give it to the poor person over there? Really needed it. Some little single mother or something can't pay her bills. Why didn't you give it to her? You hand a hundred dollars to her. Well, God wasn't trying to get his need met. God's trying to find some right soil. Picks that man out of thousands, thousands of people. Give that hundred dollars to that man. Well, I'll receive it as a seed, he said. But will you give me the opportunity to invest it and after I invest it, would you mind if I can just prove the Lord and see what he'll give me the ability to do for you with this hundred dollars? She said, well, yeah, knock yourself out. <laughs> that man showed up at camp meeting. He'd had that hundred dollars nine months. Said, I invested it here, then I invested it there, then I took that and invested it there. He said, I brought the check of the interest of the multiplication of your hundred dollars over the last nine months. Your hundred dollars is now 10,000 in nine months. Said, now I love you, but don't want you to be greedy. Said, how about we divide this? We'll give your son a third, we'll give Joni a third, and we'll give you a third. I wasn't even in the process. And I ended up with $3,333. And my wife ended up with $3,333. And she ended up with $3,333 from $100. See, don't look at me funny. I ain't been taking yours. God's been out there farming the stuff for me. I'd like to give me a hundred. Nine months. A hundred dollars became ten thousand. I'm telling you, you are not ready for what God is about to do in the realm of finances in the body of Christ. You're not ready. You're not ready. 
I'm going to slip this in today. I'm going to slip this in today. Brother Copeland called me today. He said, my God, my God, my God. That's the way he talked. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> my God, my God, my God, my God. I said, Brother Copeland, the Lord gave me a word at camp meeting. Immediate, immediate. He went, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, Rod, my God. He said, Jerry Savelle just got up in the, in, the, in the West Coast Believers Convention, Anaheim, California. Just got up and spent a whole night dragging us faith people, making us stare at the Word. I said, let me, let, me tell you, let, me tell you, let me tell you what he said. He said, it's time to begin to believe for immediate miracles. I, I said, 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 All right. I said, I said, I went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He said, my God, Rod, he said, Savelle took us through the whole Bible. He said, it took us through the whole Bible. And all we could find is now, immediately, now, immediately, now, immediately. You know why? You know why? Because it's time. It's time. It's time. Our faith has been built, and it's time. Immediately. Oh! I might get back to that. I might get back to that. I might get back to that. During the healing revival, the, the, the miracles were always instantaneous. Underneath Oral Roberts' tent, the miracles were always instantaneous. In Catherine Kuhlman meetings, the miracles were always instantaneous. But then, God saw that the people had no, the preachers, and therefore the people had no foundation of doctrine. They didn't know, they didn't know what they believed or how, all they had was a gift. And they'd walk out there and that gift would operate. And God said, I gotta I got slow this here down. Because they began to make gods. They didn't have to seek the word, they had oil. They didn't, they didn't have to know, they didn't have to know Hebrews 11, 1, 2. They had AAI. And I, I'll be real honest with you, he didn't know a whole lot. Didn't have to. Sister Kuhlman didn't know much at all. She looked at Norval Hayes right now and said, Norval, I have no idea what faith is or how it operates. He said, dear God, Catherine, don't say that. You'll be taken with some disease and die. She said, unless I could get the gift to operate in my own life, I'd die if a disease came in my body. Two years later, she was dead. Why? 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 She had the gift, but she had no foundation. So God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise up some folk like Kenneth E. Hagin and so forth. I'm going to teach the people faith. I'm going to teach them. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I can't stand myself. Right now, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, something going on in here. I'm telling you right now, everybody that missed it tonight missed it they missed it they missed it they missed it and you got it and you're getting it and you're going to get more sit down sit down just talking to you out of my spirit so he gave us got us on the word got us on the word now face substance things, hope for the evidence thing not seen. God has given every man the measure of faith. Oh, hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Get on the word. Get on the word. Get on the word. Find out what faith is. Learn the living realities of God's word. Learn righteousness in Christ Jesus. Learn. And for 20 years, God taught us. Some of us were listening. God taught us. Some of you need to catch up. I'm just telling you, some of you need to catch up. I ain't got time to take you back to kindergarten and lead you up to where we're, we're, we're getting our third PhD here. I don't, I don't have time. You, you better get in that book. And God taught the body faith. He taught us faith. He took us from that ditch over yonder 
where it was just a gift and no word, no foundation. Now then he kept pushing his teachings, 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 but as the church always does, we fell in the ditch on the other side of the road where everything was out there someday. Confess it now, believe it. You receive it, someday you'll have it. Someday, someday, someday. Confess it, believe it, confess it, believe it. Bake that cake. Don't open the door because the cake will fall. Keep your faith out there. And there was no, we departed completely from the New Testament concept that every miracle Jesus performed was an instant miracle. Yeah. Brother Copeland said, what, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm saying, Brother Copeland, you've taught us. Brother Hagen taught us. Brother Norval Hayes taught us. I've helped teach a few myself. We've taught them to live by faith. But now it's time, now it's time that we come out of that ditch and we don't get in that ditch, but the body begins to walk right in the middle of the road and use the faith that has now been imparted and instructed, imparted and instructed into them to walk out and do it the way Jesus did it. It is the time of the restoration of all things. The same anointing that Jesus walked in, we are going to walk in and it is an instantaneous miracle healing and deliverance ministry. That's why God popped that baby's eyes open the other day to prove to you it was a sign, saith God, a sign that the day and moment of instantaneous miracles, healings, deliverance is here and it is upon you. Come here, lady, you're going to get something right now. Come here, come here. You're going to get something right now. You're going to get something right now. Not tomorrow, right now, right now. Oh, God, come here. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm not. I'm ready for some instant stuff. I'm ready for some right now stuff. Right there, Paula's mother. Stand up, Paula's mother. Tonight. My sugar was 111 before dinner tonight, and I'm only taking one-third of the medication that I've taken. Two times a day, I skip it. Come here. Let me tell you, let me tell you. There's only two instances. There's only two instances where there was any time lapse between when Jesus ministered to a person and the total, absolute, complete miracle took place. And in one of those two, Jesus prayed for a blind man he said, I see men walking as trees. And so people have used this for, well, down the road somewhere that, no. Nope. Jesus said, well, stay right here. Prayed for him the second time. And you said that wasn't instant. Well, honey, it was a whole lot faster than we believe. She's down to a third of her normal medication. Her sugar is staying the same. That's a person walking and seeing men as trees. She's almost out of the woods, but she's not all the way out. And I believe tonight, now, now, in... Now! Ah! Shout! Stand up and shout now! 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 Shout! I believe now! 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 There it is! There's anointing! Now! Ah! Now! 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 Ah! Right now! Right now! Right now! In this moment! In this moment! In the... Sit down. Oh, I gotta, I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down. I gotta get through it. I gotta get through it. I gotta get through. Ah! Gotta get through it. Gotta get through it. Now! 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 You watching me? Now! Now! I 
don't want joy tomorrow. I don't want joy in the morning. I want it now. I want it now. I'm greedy. I'm selfish. I want it now. I want it the way Jesus served it up. I want it now. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you something. Took you to Mephibosheth, didn't I? Some of you. Took you to Mephibosheth. Under that table eating crumbs. What did I tell you over a year ago, a year and a half ago? What did I tell you? Reaper's going to overtake sowers. Faster than you can get it in the ground, harvest started there. You're going to reap where you didn't sow. That, that the Smith Wigglesworths and the Howard Carters and the Dr. Lester Summerholes and so forth sowed. We're going to reap. We're the reaping generation. That's who we are. Get comfortable with it. That's who we are. Get comfortable with it. That's who we are. We were born with a sickle in our hand. We're the reaping generation. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Why do you think it is? Now watch this. We've had downpourings and ground swells of revival of salvation. Times where people just flooded into the kingdom of God. You tell God do it. We've had great outpourings of healing. The 1950s, late 40s, into the 50s, and the beginning of the 60s. Tremendous outpouring of healing. You just look halfway like you almost wanted to get to a healing meeting and God to heal. God would heal you. Get the old newspapers and look at them. Headlines of every major city. Healing revivals, healing revivals, healing revivals. But now did you notice this? We've never had a real, I'll call it revival just because that, that's a, that, that helps you understand. We've really now, or, or I could say a downpour or an outpouring. We've really never had a groundswell, revival, downpouring, outpouring in the body of Christ. We've had it of joy. Healing. We've had it in every area but money. We've always had to scrape. We've always had to just about beg, bar, and steal. I mean, that's just the expression. Just scrape and ev everything you could possibly do. Work your brain till it felt like it was just oozing out your ears. Trying to, trying to see how we could get enough money to get this thing done. Never had that. Never had that huge just where people... Just, I'm, it'd be the equivalent, the healing revival, the salvation revivals that we've had with the Finneys and so forth. Where entire cities were shaken to the core and, and the ones that didn't get saved, they were the, they were the minority. Most folk did get saved. Now, the equivalent of that in the realm of finances would be that in about the next 12 to 18 months, this section right here would all become millionaires. About that minute. So you look at me like that can't happen. Every bit of that was paid for on the same bloody cross that brought the salvation revival and the healing revival and the joy revival. I'm telling you right now, before we leave here, there's going to be a money revival. Money cometh. Somebody shout, money cometh. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You telling me nine months ago I can throw down a hundred dollars and come back nine months later and that thing has grown into ten thousand dollars? What's it going to be when the ten thousand gets reinvested nine months from then? You want to multiply that out? I'm telling you right now, God. Now I'm going to tell you why it's never happened. You want to be in a prophetic night or not? I'm going to tell you right now why it's never happened. It has never happened because God knows history. Salvation revival under Wesley 
and Finney. Well, let's take the Salvation Revival under Finney. And let's take the Holiness Revival under Wesley. And let's take the Healing Revival under the A.A. A. Allens and Jack Coes and Amy Simple McPhersons and so on and so forth. Now, the reason that we've never seen that kind of a demonstration of God, and we're going to see it. Now listen, listen how scripturally accurate I am. When the children of Israel were being led out of Egypt, five years ago I preached to you when they were being brought out of Egypt, the devil said, before you leave, let's make a deal. First one had to do with salvation. Second one had to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Third one had to do with their posterity or their children after them. The fourth one, the last bastion of satanic resistance to the children of Israel leaving Egyptian bondage was this, leave your cattle here leave your money leave your sacrifice the last thing to be loose before we leave here is the money now why have we never seen it we have never seen it because god had to save it to last Watch this. What did we do with the salvation revival under Finney? Finney's, gener Finney, Finney's generation got the truth. Here's a doctor, he can tell you more about it than me. Finney's generation got the truth. His children walked in that truth. Their children, the third generation, guarded that truth. They built walls around it. They institutionalized it. They took the move of God and put it under glass and overlaid it with gold to protect it. They did not walk in it. And by the fourth generation, they had forgotten totally about it. The major institutions of higher learning in this nation were founded in that revival and the holiness revival under Wesley. You go to a one of them today and try to find one ounce of truth. It's not there, see? It's not there because the fourth generation forgets it. Walks away from it totally. The third generation, they institutionalize it and they lay it over with God. They, they keep it. They, they may build denominations out of it. They build doctrines out of it and write it all down. Not so they can do it, but so they can protect it. So they can guard it. And by the fourth generation, they forget it totally, walk away from it. God had to save this breakthrough in finances to the last, so that didn't happen. Because if he had given it time to become institutionalized, men would have begun to depend on the money. Let me tell you, when this thing, I tell you, you see my arms, when you see that there are goosebumps all over my arm the size of quarters, I'll tell you I'm in a prophetic realm right now. I'm sorry it wasn't Sunday morning. When it comes, and it's coming, it's coming so fast, It's coming so fast. It's coming so fast. God, God has two big old containers just behind the sapphire sill of heaven's gate and they've been reserved for the last day. One of them is brimming full of the wrath of God and the other is brimming full of signs, wonders, miracles, prosperity and deliverance and let me tell you before we leave here in the rapture he's tipping them both out 
and it's only going to be determined which one you get by what you're made of. You're either going to get the wrath or you're going to get the blessing. There's a dividing line and God's going to find out who are the sheep and who are the goats. He's going to find out what's chaff and what is pure. He you're not in here. I'm prophesying to you tonight. And ain't no little bit in this thing. It's all or nothing. It's coming so fast and so furious that buildings like this, I'm telling you right now, the harvest that is coming, buildings like this are going to have to be used just to take the people that got healed of blindness. Another building over there. These are the cripples that have begun to walk. Another building. I'm don't sit there, but I'm not saying something that I think would be a good idea. I, I'm prophesying to you. It's coming so fast. God's going to start dumping out those instantaneous miracles, healing, salvation. And we're going to have the money coming in so fast and furious that if they won't give us enough air time, we'll buy ABC. Money talks. Money talks. I don't care who you think you are. Nobody thought Donald Trump was anybody. Now when he gets out of his helicopter, the waters part. I'm telling you right now, business mergers. Every time I see one of these banks merging with another bank, hallelujah, it's coming into the kingdom. We're going to preach the gospel in one fast, furious, Holy Ghost blaze trail of fire and fury. And then we're out of here. It may only last a month. It may only last 30 days. It may only last 90 days. It may last three years. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I can tell you one thing. I'm going to live right. I'm going to stay out of the wrath, and I'm going to be in the blessing. I'm going to get my stuff. Somebody go back yonder and tell me is my wife back there. She, she told me she'd be back there. She don't have to come out. I just want to know she's back there. A lot of times, what difference does that make? I like to know my wife's in the house. A lot of times she's not out here. She's back there with a baby on each knee, watching on television. But I know she's here. And it makes a difference in my spirit. Well, you'd rather have a pastor like that than one looking for where the secretary is, will you? You getting this? Now, I told you, repentance, I didn't want to preach that. Bring refreshing. I got so tired of preaching the power of Pentecost. I said, God, can't nobody else preach this? God raised me up to go to Pentecostal denominations. Entire denominations that three generations ago were born in Pentecost. But this being the third generation have so institutionalized it that they don't even recognize it. You ask me what things like Pensacola, Florida are, I'll tell you what they are. It's a, it's a drink of water in a dry place where denominations, the vast majority, something like 85 to 87 percent of all the people getting blessed in Pensacola are Pentecostal people who have departed so far from Pentecost that, 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 that they've got to have a refreshing. You know, all the numbers of salvation. It's not, it's not folk off the street. It's church folk. It's so-and-so daughter whose daddy was a preacher a generation ago and preached that message. It's gotten so far away from it in some dead, cold, liturgical, so-called Pentecostal church where they speak in tongues only on Sunday night in the background and they move from the bad side of the tracks and a little white frame building uptown to a nice brick one with crystal chandeliers and they left God on the other side of the track. Now, 
repentance, refreshing, restoration. Somebody asked me, said, did you see so-and-so on TBN the other night? No, don't get TBN. Well, they, they were prophesying, they were prophesying that the time of restoration is here. Said beginning on the 15th of June and for the rest of the year of Jubilee, there's going to be restoration. Well, well thank God for the confirmation. I said it two years ago. But mine was preceded with repentance. Hello? And I'm here to prophesy to you tonight. The restoration has begun. We are in a moment of restoration. Can I tell you something? Here's what church is going to become from now on. Whatever you came in with, you're leaving without. And whatever you came in without, you're leaving with. There's a word. That pain you came in here with, you're leaving. You ain't leaving here with it, you're leaving here without it. What you came with, you're leaving without. But what you came without, that touch of God, that joy, that blessing, that anointing, that healing, whatever you came without, you're gonna come in without it and you're gonna leave with it. It's the moment of restoration. Shout it, restoration. Everything, everything the devil has stolen from the church. Whoa! Everything the devil has stolen from the church. Everything, now you can help me a little bit. Everything the devil has stolen from the church. Everything, that healing, that instantaneous miracle working healing power that makes little nine-year-old boys born blind, eyes pop open, everything the devil has stolen is risk. heard your Holy Ghost here's something for you the place where you were poured out beat up broken bread poured out wine can't go on can't take it anymore will be the exact spot of the outpouring in your life. God spoke to me when I was going through the hard time. God said, don't leave Columbus, Ohio, boy. I know they're making fun of you in the newspaper. I know they're laughing at you. I know two-thirds of the church has walked out on you. I understand that. I know your family's left you. I know they won't even speak to you. I know some of them have even sued you. I know what's going on. But don't leave there, son. Because if I pour you out here, I'll make an outpouring on the point where I poured you out. I'll turn your pain into the place of rain. I'm going to... God said, sit down. God said, stay in Columbus, boy. Stay in Columbus. They offered me $300,000 a year, a new house, a new car every 12 months, and all we need you to do is walk in the building on Sunday morning, preach 45 minutes, and walk out right at a time where my children are being made fun of when they're going through the grocery line. I'd go out and preach to crowds that were the biggest those people had ever seen in their life. People would literally try to literally tear the handles off the doors trying to get into the car 
are where I was just so I could put my hands on them. And I'd come back to Columbus, Ohio and find graffiti sprayed all over my gate and a new newspaper article about me. And God said, stay, stay. I didn't tell you to leave. Stay, stay when it looks like running is easy. Stay, stay, hang on, and I'll turn that thing around, and I'll restore your glory, and at the place of your greatest pain, I'll send an outpouring of the... Get on your feet for 15 seconds, shout. Shout, I dare you. Shout, I dare you. It's coming back. Your glory's coming back. Your honor's coming back. Your victory's coming back. Your children are coming back. The place where God broke you, he's coming back to put you back together. She back there? Somebody that helps take care of my children. Get back there and take care of my children. I want my wife. I don't care what she looks like. She ain't got church clothes on. Tell her I want her. I want her right now. I've got a word for her. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, she cut up my cut, cut, cut. Well, shit, hey, hey. Well, some of my, 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 I dare you to praise it. I dare you to praise it. I dare you to praise you. What I came in here with, I'm leaving without. What I came in here without, I'm leaving with it. I'm gonna stay here till I get it. I dare you to say it. What I came in here with, I'm leaving without. What I came here without, I'm leaving with it. Did you hear me, devil? I'm not claiming it, naming it, and someday having it. It's the moment of restoration in my life. Ah, oh, don't stand there and pat a cake. I walked in here with pain. It's the hour of restoration. I'm walking out without it. I walked in here with a burden. I'm leaving here without it. When I came in here, I didn't have no joy. But what I came in without, I'm leaving with. Restoration! Restoration! Now! 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 now. Somebody tell them I'm getting down, 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 down. Laugh at the devil and tell him put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. Jesus is coming. And before I leave here, I'm going to get my stuff. He's going to put your honor back. He's going to put your glory back. I'm telling you, every time you come in these doors, whatever you came in with, you're leaving without. 
whatever you came in without you leaving with I dare you to say it I'm telling you it's prophetic I dare you to say it I didn't have it when I came in but I got it when I'm going out I didn't have it when I came in but I got it when I'm going out it's restoration it's restoration it's restoration it's every dollar the devil stole from me Austin's with her back there and he don't want to leave her. I said Austin's back there with her and he don't want to leave her. I prophesied from right here. You watching baby? You watching? I believe this. I believe this. The devil attacked my wife. That area of children. I'm telling you right now. This Bethany place thing is not a good idea. It's going to be the outlet for her anointing and in the area of her greatest pain God is going to send a deluge of rain he's going to anoint her you hear me the Lord is anointing you to lay your hands on critical children and watch them be restored in this hour a miracle healing place the Bethany place will not be a place just to take care of little afflicted children. It will be a place that even as they walk through the door, neurological disorders are going to be wiped out of their bodies. Is anybody in this building? Hey. Do you understand? In the place where you were poured out, he's going to pour out. You don't understand. You don't understand. In the area that hurt you the most, that's the very area that God is going to pour himself through you. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Do you? Well, if you understand me, praise him. I said praise him! Hear that Lord? There's a vibration. There's a vibration in the spirit. There's a vibe like a tuning fork. I hear you Lord. It's like a tuning fork going off in your spirit. There's a reverberation. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back three New Year's Eves ago. A reverberation. A reverberation. There's a reverberation going on in your spirit. Something's going like that. Something's going like that. Something's going like that. God is tuning you up. 
he's about to release you out there and whatever area that you're gonna come across the path of people and they're gonna say what's that sound it sounds like my sound what's that vibration it feels like my vibration because God is gonna lead you every oh my God God is gonna bring you across the path of people to release the anointing that is reverberating on the inside of you they're gonna come in and come in and come I can't even say I can't even say it. I don't know how to say it. John had that problem. I, I don't even know how to say it. Ah! Harvest, Jubilee, Harvest. There's the end. Can you get one? It's in there. It's in there. You touch a tuning fork, feels like electricity. All light is a sound anyway. You didn't hear me. Light is sound. God said, and light was, it's sound. Your light is going to be like a sound. God's gonna give you the ear of the people but not not for words for light for energy it's gonna happen so fast God's gonna use you to draw them and he'll use you mainly in the area of your greatest pain what you've been delivered from he's gonna send you to people just like that Come here, lady. Come here. In the green blouse. Come here. You, the stripes. Yeah. Come here. It's happening in you. Do you know what kind of people those are? You do? Drugs and alcohol. God's going to. God's anointing her. Anointing her. She's going to start bringing drug, druggies and alcoholics. She's going to start bringing druggies and alcoholics. They're going to be drawn to her light. They're going, oh yes, 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 yes. Like insects in the night. Drawn to light. Drawn to light. Drawn to light. Drawn to light. Not just her, you. You. God's going to use you. I dare you to say God's going to use me. 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 You see that? You see that? Well, I got some of it out anyway. Instant. Say now. 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 Say I believe now. Now. I believe when I go home, my teenager's going to be sitting there in the middle of the floor saying, I got saved while you were gone. Now! 
change your mindset. Now. Now. I'll probably find a check tomorrow. Now! I spent my money. I spent my, I spent my gas money for work this week coming to church tonight. I pull my pants on tomorrow. I'll probably find a 20 in my pant pocket. Now! 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 I have favor now! I have joy now. I didn't come in with it, but I'm leaving with it. Ah, what I came in without, I'm leaving with. Now! Restoration. 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 Now! Pain goes now. The curse is broken now. We might, we might see men walking the trees for a little bit, but not long. Not long. Not long. Not long. Thank God for what he's done in my son. Thank God for what he's done. Thank God for that progression. But I'm telling you, the last month, my wife and I have changed our prayer. We're going to get up one morning. He's going to open his eyes, and there's not going to be one trace that any of that was ever there. Not one single trace. Now! Hey. My hundreds are turning into 10,000. Look at me funny if you want to. Get mine now. How long take you to work out 10,000? Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had somebody to shout with me tonight. I dare you to shout restoration, 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 restoration. Restored in my relationships, restored in my family, restored in my finances, restored in my house, restored in my future, restored in my mind. Woo! Woo! Better get some seed. Tear up what you were doing before. You didn't. You didn't have this word then. Tear that thing up. You got out of five. Put another one with it. Sow some good seed on this word. I said, sow some good seed on this word. Not just well. Not just a little normal Wednesday night tip. Hallelujah. Do something significant. God has spoken a word some seed on that word if you're making out a check put a WHC on it if you need an offering envelope there in the pew in front of you you ought not to even worry about an envelope tonight you ought to just give just give our, our sustenance is not in the federal government giving us a tax write off sustenance is in God blessed be his name forever amen do something better than you were going to do before you got this word. Mm -hmm. Now! 
restoration. Now, reapers overtaking sowers. Now, reaping where I didn't sow. Now, came in with it, leaving without it. Now, came in without it, leaving with it. Now, joy now, peace now, victory now, anointing now, blessing now, now. Everybody with an offering. Everybody with an offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, lay your hands on it and scream at it. Multiply now! Now, tell the holy angels to go get that and a hundredfold more. Tell the angels, go get that and a hundredfold more. Go get that and a hundredfold more. Go get that. Look at me. Look at me. There's another thing the Lord told me about six months ago. Believe for nothing less than a hundredfold on every seed you sow. Nothing less than a hundred. What are we doing messing around? Well, I'm a thirtyfold. Well, what's the matter with you? Well, the Lord just made me a thirty. No, you made you a thirty. There are enough thirties out there. You believe for a hundred. You believe for a hundred. You believe for a hundred. Believe for a hundred. On every seed you sow. And Brother Copeland called and said, You know, God's been speaking to me. We ought to be bleeding for a hundredfold. Then I talked to Jesse Duplantis. I'm not, I'm not, he said, I'm not choking. I'm not believing 30, 60, or 90. I'm not choking on a hundred. Hey, knock yourself out, God. Hundredfold. Hundredfold. I'm telling you, it's coming so fast. It's coming so fast, it'll burn the hair off your head. It's coming so fast. The blessing of God coming so fast. I'm going to get mine. Look at me funny if you want to. I'm going to get mine. Reap where you didn't sow. I didn't sow that hundred. I didn't have nothing to do with that hundred. But it multiplied so big and so quick and so fast. The man said, well, might as well give him some of it too. I reap where I didn't sow. If I reap where I didn't sow, I fully intend on reaping hundredfold where I do. Hallelujah. 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 I sold that 2,000. Brother Shambach was here. Some of you made that commitment. Don't forget it. I sold that 2,000 that night. And before the week was out, a man walked up to me and handed me $50,000 for my son. I can't, I can't touch it. I ain't allowed to touch it. But it blessed me more him to have it than me. Think about that. Boy, seven years old, be seven years old this week. Walk around $50,000. He's blessed, man. I'd like, just, I'd like to just rub on him. Hallelujah. And that's something, don't get mad at me. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Up so and then believe it. Of course, of course, I don't know if you get up every morning and open the curtains and look out and if it's not raining, open up the door and tell the holy angels of God to go get it and bring it in. I don't know if you do that. See, I imagine if I took a survey right here, I wouldn't find very many that did that. But I do that because I taught it, so I believe it. You have to learn how to reap you don't reap just because you're nice. You reap because you have learned the laws of reaping. You have to send the angels to get what belongs to you. The devil run around in the firmament and steal every bit of it. 
But if the thief be found, he'll restore sevenfold. That's the reason he don't mess with my stuff much. I make him give it back seven times more than he took. Now! Not tomorrow. You have to send the word of the Lord forth. The word of God goes forth to accomplish what you send it forth to do. Now, Lord, you said that my seed sown would return a hundredfold. So I now send that word forth to accomplish that which you sent it to do, and it shall not return. Don't you come back to me. Don't you come walking in here with 30-fold. Don't you return to me, void. You return to me. Do you do that? Oh, I thought about it. No. Do you do that? No, you sit around and bellyache because the boss didn't give you a raise. Because you see, that's the only way God could ever bless you. God give you an idea. God give you an idea. A hooli hoop. A beanie baby. Somebody thought of that. Put a bunch of dumb beans in a little bag that don't even halfway look like a dog. Billionaire. Billionaires. Dumb beanie babies. And that's the truth. Well, God could have given you that idea, you know. Well, no, some of you, you couldn't because you don't work. You have to work. God doesn't reward slothfulness. But anyway, that's another sermon, and I preached enough tonight. Do you have your offering ready? Look at it and say, now! now! Ooh, right now. Right now, things are going in motion to bring that back. Right now, angels. If you could see in the realm of the Spirit, you would see angels right now. Running out to get it. Go! Don't be slow about it either. There's gospel to be preached. Hallelujah. Well, somebody put me out of my misery. Are you going to sing something? Sunday morning, wouldn't miss it if I was you. Wednesday night, wasn't half bad. If I was you when I went home tonight, I'd write down, now, immediately, restoration, get it? I'd get that in my spirit. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah! Pray for me. Tomorrow night I have to be in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. That's about 7,000 miles from here. And I got to be back on Friday morning. My wife and my mother are going to be with Bishop.